The Big Footy Port Adelaide podcast is proudly sponsored by New Vision. My team, Kanda, power. I love the power. power, power. I love the power. power, power. I love the power. And the last player we're going to talk about tonight is also someone that's uh, been talked about a hell of a lot on our forum, and that's Willem Drew from North Ballarat. Mm. Uh, who's 188 centimetres, 78 kilo, uh, can play uh, either on a back flank, can play as an inside-outside mid. Uh, I think he's a lot like Brody Smith and uh, Matt Broadbent in that regard. Mm. Um, had an exceptionally good year at TAC Cup level, was named in the best players in 14 of his 15 games, picked up a lot of the bowl, kicked goals, uh, laid tackles, really good clearance numbers, um, good handball receives numbers. Uh, he's very athletic, got really good pace, really good attacking instincts. Do you like him? I kind of do because he, for me, like you talk about players sometimes being a running tackle where all they're good at doing is running and tackling. Yep. For me, he's he's, basically, he's like a running pair of hands, but that's much better. Like mm. his hand pass, he's quick. He is quick by hand. Yeah. He's quick yep. and he's accurate by hand. And that is really, that's so hugely valuable. And if you add that with a bit of speed, that's a zone breaker. That's an yeah. absolute defensive zone breaker. So from that respect, I really do like him. Um, is he going to be able to upgrade to the next level? Don't know. I, I find the Broadbent comparison really tough because Broadbent is so kick based and Drew is so handball based that they just seem like completely different guys to me. Yeah, um, I think. I th- yeah, it's interesting. I think um, when he's playing off half back, I think Drew is very much a kick based player. Mm. Um, I certainly agree with you in terms of his quick handball. I think he's probably the best handballer in this draft group. Yeah. Certainly the quickest yeah. handballer in this draft group. For sure. Um, the reason why I've related him to someone like Matty Broadbent is his ability to play as an inside midfielder, ability to play on a wing, ability to play uh, across half back as well. Like he, he can do all the jobs that Matty Broadbent can do. Um He's an interesting one because he, he didn't really have a great championship. So I was super impressed with him in his first game against Vic Metro. Uh, I thought he really helped sort of win that game. For, uh, sorry, he didn't let him win, win it all. But I thought he had a, a bloody good game that day. But then he just sort of disappeared at, at national level. Um, sort of got shoved in a back pocket, was doing a sort of shutdown role. Um, and the same thing would be said uh, in the All-Stars game at, as, as well, where he sort of got shoved in the back pocket... Um, didn't really do much. Um, and, a, and a lot of people sort of on our forum were sort of scratching their head, sort of saying, why is he talked up as a first-round pick? Um, because if we remember how Jarman Impey was playing in the second half of this year where he just, you get the ball to him and he'd just be able to create something through the middle, you know, as part of a fast play. Yeah. He's that kind of player. Like he, I think for the port style that we're trying to build, like the ones that the young guys coming up are playing and trying to play, I think he's an excellent fit. If he's there at 30 or 31, I would absolutely understand if Port picked him. Yep. Um, I think that he's obviously got to bulk up a bit because if he's going to play this style, he is going to have to be able to endure a few knocks. But I think if you're looking for a player in this draft that is going to be a, probably a second-round proposition, um, it would be really hard to go past him if you're looking for a guy that can destroy zones. Like I know He can't do it single-handedly. But if you make him part of a team that is built to do that, they will move with speed, they move with accuracy, and they have fast hands, he's absolutely top of the pile. Yeah. For his niche, he's excellent. Yeah. If Hawthorne had any picks at all above the top in, in the oh, first sort of 150, he would be the perfect fit for them, I reckon. Oh, I reckon Sydney too, frankly. Yeah, Sydney as well, yeah. Yeah, or, or, and sure. look, this is the thing. You name any of the top sides and you say, here, have Willem Drew, they look, he looks excellent and they look better, in my view. Yep. So I, I like him. Do I like him? I'm not 100% sure. I've, wav- I've wavered more on Willem Drew than any other player in this draft uh, year, to mm. be honest. Like I, I've gone yeah. from really loving him to saying, I, I just don't see it, to sort of, yeah, I think he's going to be good, to, oh, I'm not sure. He's, is he going to crash and burn? Is he going to be, like, again, I think he's, he might be one of those players that's going to be an absolute gun or there's going to be a bit of a flop. Like, uh, I don't think there's going to be any sort of middle ground there. Uh, if he's there with uh, 30 or 31, I'd be pretty happy to take him, though, because uh, I think yeah, he's got the raw tools. I think he's there's a lot to like about him, and I think um, with the way that we want to play footy, 
uh, I think he would suit our game style pretty well. Yeah, yeah. The only the only concern I have is how good he is going the other way. That's my only concern. Yeah. Well, I think as a midfielder, he's he's very good. He had huge tackle numbers. I think he averaged something like seven and a half tackles a game in the in the tackle, mm. which is uh, which is elite for that level. Yeah, but that's um, probably mostly because he was a secondary mid, though. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Um, look, he didn't impress defensively uh, at the championships or in the uh, All Stars game. I got to say that. Mm. Um, where would you see him fitting in, at Paul? Would you do you see him sort of? You know, playing across half back, or do you think we would play him in the guts? I see him competing with Amon. Okay, yep, I can see that. I can I see, see him I playing see... on a wing and doing a really good job, to be honest. And look, at 188 mm. centimetres, I think we're due for a, a taller wingman, to be honest. Yeah, like, I mean, I think that, you know, we, we sort of were all super enthusiastic about Archie in his handball and his physical build. Um, he doesn't have the same physical build, but he's got a probably a more useful handball. Like, the long handball is pretty. But if you can't execute it quickly, it doesn't happen. Um, what Will and Drew's got is that as the game gets tighter and faster and harder, what he's got shouldn't disappear. It should stay. Um, and that, you know, we're talking about making a final side. That's that's for me. Like, that's a finals trait he's got there. That's a, that's what I'm talking about him as a Sydney or a Hawthorne or whatever else. Like, he's he could be a real contributor, a genuine contributor to a, a, a top side. And for that yeah. reason, I would be pretty keen on having him. For sure. Look, to be honest, we need more rangers. And we, look, anyone that's yeah. named after Willem Dafoe, I'm, I'm more than happy to draft, to be honest. Right. I was trying to work out why Willem, why Willem. Yeah, got it, got it. He was probably born when Spider-Man came out or something. <laughs> that's it. Great actor, great football talent. Yeah, match made in heaven. <laughs> yep, all good. I sit there and go, Drew's slightly different to Atlanta yeah. Clark. Although, he is. Yep. Although I still rate him at Monk, that sort of thing. So, yeah, I'd, I'd be going Drew and one of the other two if I could at 30 and 31. Mm. Yep. Well, let's talk about Drew, uh, which is Willem Drew from North Ballarat. 188 centimetres. Can play inside mid, can play outside mid, can play off a back flank. Um, he's very similar to Broadbent in that regard. So he can pretty much play any position that he wants. Um, I don't think... Uh, you sort of amateur draft watchers got to see the best of William Drew this year because uh, he had phenomenal TAC Cup form, but his uh, championship form, he was sort of stuck in a back pocket for most of it, um, and you didn't really get to see uh, the midfield William Drew. Yeah, yep. I'd agree with that. Um, William Drew, uh, for me, I think you talked about Andrew McGrath having the fastest hand. Like, I guess the second for me would be William Drew for fast hands. He's just ridiculous. I think he should be playing yep. table tennis, not playing football. <laughs> um, <laughs> he and the, It's not just the speed of the hands, but also the, the speed of the mind to go with it. Like He makes that decision instantly, and it's just an instant, accurate, fantastic rebound. Like If you put him at the fall of a ruckman, that ball has zigged and zagged and every midfielder is wrong-footed because it's gone to him and he's immediately t- pinged it off in another direction. I think the inside potential for Willem Drew is enormous and I think that if we had, or we have Paddy Ryder next year, but I mean, if we, on the longer term, we have a dominant Ruckman and Willem Drew, um, fireworks, absolute fireworks. Mm. Yep. Yeah, I th- I'm with you. He's inside work. He's just so good with the ball in his hands and his decision making, and it is just so good. The other thing he is is probably one of the best spreaders in the competition. Yeah. Okay. His his spread from the contest is brilliant. Um, It's something we suck at coming out of defence is spreading well. Absolutely. Um, (laughs) The knock on him is he is an average kick. Mm. Well, Uh, I think he knows he's an average kick and kick. And plays within his what he's capable of, so you don't get to see these shocking kicks. They're just not quality kicks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's that's fair enough. Yeah, look, I'd yes. be pretty happy if he was there at thirty or thirty-one, and and we selected him. I think um, he'd give us someone a little bit diverse. He's obviously got really good pace, good endurance, uh, quite explosive. Can play multiple positions. I think. Um, you know, he'd really suit the way that we try and play footy, I reckon, as well. Um, yeah. And look, if we if we land a couple of those last three or four names, um, you know, happy times. The thing about Joe Here we Adley go. Pick 33. Pick 33. Is, 
Okay. Pick 33. We actually, here we go. Is he actually going to say it or are we going to just whatever? Look, I'm going to keep talking until he actually gets picked. The thing about Joe Ackley oh, is... Here we go, little... here we go. Just interrupt me. Oh, Willem Drew. Pick 33, Willem Drew. <laughs> Oh, that's a oh. poor Mish misses out on Miles Paholke, but uh, oh my god, Drew and Atley, that's um. I ne- I oh, hereby declare I this that. a draft success. This is pretty bloody good. Oh, that's I interesting, that and look, it's the about time there. we had a ringer. We've got yeah. our first ringer in a number of years here. Faith Beanhead, you little ripper. He could be anything. Willem Drew is has got, in my view, right up there among the fastest hands. Certainly, the fastest hands of a Port Adelaide player I've seen at AFL level. Um, he is quick thinker. He's quick with his hands. He's good inside, and he has a decent top speed. His acceleration isn't great, but he's got a decent top speed. Um, wow! Holy shit! And Willem Drew's in there. He's Willem Drew for me. He excels in that mid-level traffic, so not necessarily being crunched. But if you're in there in that sort of um, ball up traffic where it's always, you know, it's quite busy, but it's not necessarily, you know, everyone's hanging on everyone else. That is personally, I think that is absolutely perfect position for him. Um, we now have an actual midfield when these guys get up to speed. Oh, like we have a legitimate midfield now. The thing that we've needed is clearance winning ability through that midfield to take the pressure off Boat, to take the pressure off Gray, take the pressure off Wines. Well, we've got that now. We've got Atley and Drew who are just about the two best clearance winning mids in the TAC Cup, we can add Sam Powell Pepper to that mix, who's just going to be absolute lightning. And How? Todd Marshall, you keep underrating Todd Marshall, but oh, I tell you, I've I've got a good feeling about him. I've got a really good feeling about him. I reckon that's a really smart pick. Um, look, here's the look, other thing. As you, as you said, if, if our next pick was either Berry or someone else, I'd much prefer Marshall. I've got to say, here's the thing. <sighs> I am pretty. I, I think we have added at least one year to Travis Boak's career and at least one year to Robbie Gray's career with yeah, this draft. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. In my Funny though. Um, I listened to the send draft coverage today just to see oh, yeah. on the way through. Yeah. As soon as it got our pick, Atley will go here. As soon okay. as he went, Drew will go here. Hmm. Uh, it's like. They had bugger all idea of who would be going at each other of the clubs. As soon as it got us, they knew what type of footballers we needed. Yeah. Well, that, that, they that's... were guessing who it was, but they just nailed it straight off. Right? Mm. That was a stark contrast to the actual Fox Talk coverage, which I'll watch later, which, oh, um, yeah. talked, about, which talked about, you know, at pick 30, whatever, the next one we're going to talk about. Um, we, we'll, oh, when it, Port needs a defender. Port needs a defender. Like, bullshit, we do. No, nah, Port <laughs> needs a defender. And then we draft Will and Drew. And then what, the worst part is that they then say, oh, yeah, well, Will and Drew can play in defence a little bit. Oh, piss yeah. off. <laughs> <laughs> How desperate are you to justify your stupid opinion? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is our ill-informed yeah. opinion and we're going to make it fit whether you like it or not. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, let's crap. talk about Willem Drew. Pick 33, um, 188 centimetres, 78 kilos from North Ballarat. Only averaged the 10 disposals uh, for Vic Country at the Champs, but did average 22 touches and 7 tackles a game for North Ballarat. Uh, was named in the best players in 14 out of his 15 games at TAC Cup level. Um, I don't think we saw the best of him at the Champs because he was sort of pushed into a bit of a role in defence. Mm-hmm. Um but he is someone who uh, obviously dominated all year in the midfield for North Ballarat. Um, Porsche, I think you're pretty happy with this pick. What about you, Mish? Oh, again, what do I have him rated 13? How could I not be happy with this pick? I, I just sit there and go, he goes, he's a genuine midfielder. He's got special hands inside and he can run. He spreads, he runs real hard. Like, yep, he's not the elite kick, but Gives you kicks within his limitations, and generally they're not too bad. He can still hit a forward. He is a good player. I'm very happy about him coming in. Like, what, what's really exciting about this draft is we drafted Pal Pepper, who is, you know, he's a aggressive gun. We've drafted Joe Atley, who can play that sort of secondary role, and Willem Drew. I mean, he's happy to go half back flank apparently to to get a kick. So, um, dare I say he's the next Russell Ebert? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, there's our first flop because he only played 22 games at, at uh, VFL level. So, 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, look, he's, he's going to be good for us, I reckon. Um, I do like oh, how quickly he makes decisions. Um, mm. And more importantly, like the fact that we've drafted these three physical midfielders, like the odds are that one of them won't work out. It might not be that way. But the odds are that one of them won't work out. Something, you know, maybe maybe Sam Pepper gets stuck below ten possessions a game or something like that, or you know, something along those lines. But the fact that we've drafted the three, you would hopefully expect two of them to work out, and you'd hope for the, the third one as well. So that's pretty yeah. fun. I like that. Yep. Yeah, I actually yeah. think all three will work out to a certain level. Mm. That's whether they can promote themselves to be elite, which will then drag our team into. Grand Finals and all that, because we've Still got we need one of them. three big f- mid- midfielders who can run, and they're footballers. All right, and that's the best thing. They're footballers. Mm, right? We're mm. not just drafting somebody very good outside receiver. They they do the hard work. And yep. They do the running. Like, um, I was talking about Pal Pepper. There's one play last year and. On his footage, he's run 400 metres in one play, done four tackles and got the handball on the end to get a, to get a goal in the waffle. And they said you can watch it in the from the goal camera. They could watch it. And he clocked up 400 metres in the play before he actually got on the end of it. But he had so many involvements in the play. It's like, yes, please. Uh, I think that this is the point at which we should say to anyone out there wondering whether they'll renew at the same tier of membership this year, you are an absolute nong if you don't, and if you yeah. don't try to get better, um, because you're going to enjoy watching the side so much with these guys when they're in the side, so just don't be a deal. Be smart. Yeah. <laughs> Look, he's he really does impress with his hard running. I really like his ability to present all over the field as well. Is he someone that we can see becoming more of an Isaac Smith type hard running outside player, or do you think his inside work is far too valuable uh, for him to develop, uh, develop into just an outside player? I think you'll find he does the outside stuff whilst he's still doing the inside stuff, mm. and that's why he's so good. Yeah, like well, the fact that he spread so well from the contest. Uh, I again, I watched him off the ball in that All-Stars game. And as soon as the ball's got in their hands, he's off. And sometimes he's off quicker than the guys that he was playing with to actually realise that he'd actually made space and was actually the right outlet. But he still kept running down the ground. Yeah. And yet that's... The the rebound run that he was providing him, though he wasn't getting the ball a lot, was important. Mm. And he tends to run in the corridor. He doesn't run out wide for the ball. Now, just going to Spreaker Chat again, we've had two contenders for 2000 Superstar that Willem Drew is. Um, they're quite different. So, Mish, I'd like your your view on it. One has said he's the next Kudafides, and the other one said he's the next Nathan Buckley. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> neither. That, so, sorry, but neither are even close. Okay. I, I don't <laughs> think you would ever say the hands was the strength of Buckley. Okay, fair enough. And I don't think you would say the same with Cuda. How about Lacuria? Oh, God. Mm. I'm trying to remember what he played like. He was one of these players that used to rack up 30 possessions. You never noticed him. He was, yeah, well, he's yeah. pretty handy. Not saying he's he was bad, handles. but yeah. 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 Yep. Okay, let's go with that. Yep. Yep. So where can yeah, we see him fitting fair. in next year? Okay. Do you think he'll get games, or is he more of a Magpies player next year? Um, I, I would like start him. him in the middle of Magpies and then let him work his way into the team and, yep, 10 games. I think we wait for Sam Gray's first shit game and bring him in. <laughs> That's Sorry, my view. Well, I, I, would, I would probably suggest that Atley and Pal Pepper have pushed Sam Gray out of the team. Completely? Okay, That's fine. I'm not, I'm not going to argue. I'd be happy with that. <laughs> right, mm. well, let's talk about the... 